grown up in, in Houston. I uh, had the good fortune, a very influential high school football coach. He arranged for me to get a scholarship at TCU. It doesn't last very long. So I hobble back home to Houston, Texas, enroll at U of H, and uh, I find my home. My journey is not much unlike probably thousands of U of H students. When I transferred in, it, it was a little bit of a of a fresh start. I came home, I started thinking about a career, and at that time, I think the two most demanded jobs were accountants and petroleum landmen. So I thought, okay, I can always get a job being an accountant. Once I got closer to graduating, I went to the Career Counseling Center at U of H, and he advised me that, well, maybe not accounting, but if you thought about banking, and he arranged an interview for me at Texas Commerce Bank, and off I went, because it really was a career that was meant for me. I actually spent a lot of my career at uh, Texas Commerce Bank uh, Reagan in the Heights. Prime rate was 21.5%, but it was real banking, helping people, and I really cherish those memories. In 1987, they changed the state law to allow out-of-state banks to come to Texas. It really created a whole new environment. I made the big entrepreneurial move. I was a founding executive of Amity Bank in 1989. The bank grows and I become the CEO and that's where I am today. I met Ann Lord 25 years ago and I had a son from a previous marriage. She had a son from a previous marriage. We had a child together. One of my sisters has had some blood challenges, ended up having to uh, raise my nephew at uh, four, he's now 21. So we have four, but we call it his, hers, ours, and theirs. Well, I think everybody, uh, as you move along in your career, you want to decide, okay, how do I want to give back? Uh, it is tempting to get you know, too involved because I probably do more than I should. Because of my upbringing, a little soft spot for kids. I was a big brother for a young man for 12 years. That happened really through my United Way engagement and thinking about in my connectivity relationships and my experiences going to eventually, you know, I owe something to the school. And I forgot how I got involved at the Board of Visitors and I thought, okay, this is a, a good way to, you know, to plug in. I am most thankful to the U of H Alumni Association for for this distinctive honor. I hope it's uh, a little bit of an inspiration to you know, all future students, just lean forward, give it all you got, be curious, work hard, help others, and good things will happen to you. And you may get lucky enough to become a distinguished alum, but even if you don't, you did it right. Presenting Steve with his medallion is another past honoree, the Honorable Beth Robertson. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Stevens. Well, I'm the, the last one. I'm not an astronaut, but I'll try to land the plane within three minutes. <laughs> you know, I am thankful for the U of H Alum Association for this flattering uh, recognition. And I'm also thankful to all of you for your graciousness to be here, as, as well as your support of U of H. My story really is a short, simple story because I am an ordinary person who's been transformed by the influence and inspiration of extraordinary people. So let me start with Beth Robertson and her family. Her grandfather, he, yeah. Her grandfather, Hugh Roy Cullen, or Gampa, as I learned, he had a vision in 1927 of U of H as a public university for the working class, oftentimes first generation to, to graduate, and many times people that don't have a safety net, and that was me. And so my journey began with uh, the influence of University of Houston. Coincidentally, uh, Beth was the organizing director of the predecessor bank of Amity Bank, uh, Northwest Crossing National Bank, so she's, she and her family has truly influenced me. Uh, many of my Amity uh, family is, is here. Thank you. <laughs> Starting with the founding mother and father of Amity Bank, Walter and Yvonne Johnson. Yeah. I, 
I had the good fortune of really working for 32 years with one of the, really the legendary Texas bankers, but also a very loving surrogate mother and father. And then uh, my good friend, great friend and uh, chairman of, of Amogee, Scott McLean, he, he wouldn't... He wouldn't let this evening go by quietly without letting everybody know that they need to come. And so thank you, Scott, for, for uh, doing that. I've got just a, a number of great colleagues here. I couldn't name them all, but I'm going to stay under three minutes. But Leif and Dave and April and Mary, and the, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Young ones like Edward and Oscar. But um, uh, the bottom line is I've had the ability to be at a place where working hard, doing the right thing, and caring for each other really, really makes a difference. And the other thing about really being a, a living in Houston and going to U of H is over the years, you, you grow, you live, you learn, you work, and then you have these great lifelong friends. And I, as I got this honor, I'm thinking about all those lifelong relationships. And I, I start out with a, a, a gentleman who I've, I've sweated for 50 years with. Uh, we sweated on the uh, football uh, field in August in Spring Branch, and we worked a part-time job trying to work way through college. We worked through our, we sweated through our accounting courses. We sweated now working out, you know, special loans at Amogee Bank. Paul Bedford, you are a 50-year sweating friend. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then at U of H, you know, you work hard. Most of us work, and we also go to school. So the, your opportunity to have fun is not quite as much. But I had a good fortune of becoming a Pike. I got some of my Pike buddies here, Daryl and Bobby and Steve. And so they taught me, you got to still have fun, even though you're, you're working your way through school. And then, then through that, I, I have fine friends that went to Bel Air High School, uh, Mark Gibson and Rob Waheed. And, you know, I was in the era of disco dancing, you know, in the 70s, 80s. So, so I had to go disco dancing with these guys. They took me to Studio 54 in New York City. We stayed at the YMCA. And, <laughs> And we're waiting outside the Studio 54, and only Mark Gibson could have a Bible study waiting to get into a disco. <laughs> so my, my faith journey began with Mark, influenced by Mark, and it's also reinforced by uh, Jim Jackson, who's the most incredible, influential person that I, that I know. I also have the good fortune of clients and friends of the bank who are most often successful business leaders, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, and great givers. So that's another part of my, of my good fortune. But most important is my family. And I mentioned about the his, hers, ours, and theirs. That's not easy. And there was a time where I thought, you know, I work hard, but I just can't find that right partner. And then 25 years ago, and Laura comes into my life, I get reminded about how you can have a good family by Dexter and Sandy Bray being, because I was always envious because they love their boys every single day, even, even in spite of, of sometimes just real, real problems. But uh, I said, how can I be like them? And I end up being being able to have that kind of life. So, uh, and Laura and our kids, Tebow and Stuart and Sarah and Hunter are really the reason why I really do work so hard. And at this, in summary of it all, I am so thankful that you've been able to allow somebody who is ordinary to be extraordinary. Thank you. <laughs>